All right, guys, we are kicking off chapter three. Uh, we're going to be getting into a chapter on um, all about parallel lines, perpendicular lines, equations of lines, all that fun stuff. Um, and then we will come back around to some things we talked about with proofs and triangles and all that fun stuff as we get into chapter four. So um, what we're starting out with uh, in the first section here of chapter three is just start looking at parallel lines and that relationship. Um, so a little bit of introduction to the chapter here with just some um, explanation of what parallel means and what do we call lines that are not parallel or not perpendicular, all those good things. So as always, uh, always want to take a look at the vocab that they're throwing in here for the new section. Um, so when two lines um, are in the same plane, and they never intersect, it means they are parallel. Parallel lines just means that they run the same direction, right? The, you, you've learned in the past about the slope of a line. Um, and in Algebra 1, you talked about how if two lines had the same slope, then they were parallel because they would never intersect. So it's the same idea here, uh, but we do want to make sure that they're in the same plane uh, in order for them to be parallel. If they're, if they're not in the same plane, so that's where it says right here, where it says if they're not coplanar um, and they never intersect, then we call those guys skew lines. So skew lines never intersect, but they're not in the same plane. So we don't call them parallel. And you'll see some examples of that so you can see uh, the, the difference here. So um, you can also have parallel planes the same way you can have parallel lines. Uh, if you have two planes that are running the same direction, so if you look at the box like this, uh, if you were to say that the top of the box is a plane and the bottom of this box is a plane, um, well, those two planes would never intersect, right? Because they're parallel to each other. They're going the same direction. Um, so let's get into a couple examples on this. So for the first one, they want us to identify all the planes that are parallel to A, B, D. So we have to go back to chapter one for a minute and remind you um, that to name a plane, you need three points, like A, B, and D, that are not in a line, right? That are not collinear. So I could have used A, B, and D. I could use A, B, C. Um, I could use A, D, C. So any three points that are on this plane um, that are not in a straight line are good enough to name the plane. So uh, this one is talking about what we might see as like the top of that box, A, B, D. Um, so if we were going to look at a plane that is parallel to that, it's one, one that I just talked about a second ago, which would be the bottom of the box. Uh, so they're calling it plane EFH. Uh, and again, you could have called it EFG, uh, EHG. Um, as long as you pick three letters uh, that are not in a straight line on that plane, you can use those to name it. So your answer might look a little different than this, and that's okay. Um, when we do name a plane, we don't really have a symbol for that, so we just throw in the word, right? When you see, like, segment CG, we don't have to write the word segment because we have a symbol for that. Uh, but when it comes to planes, we don't have a symbol for planes, so we just write the word plane. Um, so let's go down to this one. So if we want to find all the segments that are parallel to CG. So here's CG. So what we're looking for is where are the other segments that are running the same direction as CG, right? Well, if you look over here, I have BF. Right here, we have AE. And right here, we have DH, right? So those are the three segments that would be parallel to this guy. They're, they're running the same direction. They would never intersect. Uh, if we go to this one, so here's the idea of a skew line. A skew line would never intersect EH, but it's also not on the same plane is EH, right? So it's not on the same plane, would never intersect. So let's look at a few of these guys. So here's EH right down here. So I got to find one that would never intersect this, but is also not on the same plane. So if you were to take a look at, say, um, AB is a great example. So AB would never intersect EH and they're not on the same plane, right? They're not running the same direction, so they're not parallel, um, but they're also not on the same plane. 
Uh, there's several other examples in here that you could find out. So again, if I'm comparing to EH, I could say CD. Right? You'll notice that he's running a different direction than EH is. It's running a different direction, so it's not parallel. Uh, parallel lines would be running the same direction. So it's running a different direction, and it's not on the same plane as EH is. Right? EH is on the bottom plane, or you could say it's on this front plane. Um, and, and CD is not on either one of those, and it's not running the same direction. So that would be a skew line. Uh, so several examples up here of skew lines. Let's try a few on our own. As always, you are welcome to pause and give some a try on your own. So for the first one, we're looking for planes that intersect plane OPT. So here's OPT, right? We would see it as the right side of that box uh, for OPT. Um, so if I want ones that intersect this plane, that means intersect means, uh, remember when two planes intersect, we learned this in chapter one, their intersection is a line. So if I look at the top of this box and the right side of this box, you see how they intersect right here at line OP, right? So uh, let's name the top of the box by picking three of the letters up there. So we could say MNO, you could say MPO, um, any combination of the three letters. So we would say plane. So you always got to write the word for these guys. Uh, so I would say MNO. So planes MNO and what other planes? Uh, what else would intersect the right side of this box? Well, you'd have the front of the box, right? Because it shares this segment with the right side of the box. So we could say MRS. There's one way of naming that one. Um, how about the bottom of the box? So the bottom shares the same segment right here as the right side of the box, right? So those guys intersect at line ST. So if we were going to name the bottom plane, you could say something like RUT. Uh, you could say SRU. Pick your favorite letter combination down there. You just got to have three of them. Uh, are there any others? that we're seeing, how about the back of the box right here, right? So the back of the box and the right side of the box intersect at line OT. So they're, they're intersecting planes. So let's say NUT, we'll use nut for an intersecting plane. Uh, so those are intersecting planes. So number two says all segments parallel to NU. So here is NU. Uh, so remember, for parallel, just like we did up above, I am looking for lines that are running the same direction as NU. So I would see this one is going the same direction, right? This one's up and down, vertical. So this one's vertical, this one's vertical, and this one's vertical. So all four of those vertical lines are parallel, right? They're all running the same direction as that one is. So we can say OT, PS, and MR. So OT, PS, and MR. So we would say something like that. Um, all segments that intersect MP. So remember that when two segments or two lines intersect, their intersection is a point. So I need another segment that intersects MP. They share a common point. So here's MP. So if they're going to share a common point, then it's going to have to hit uh, either M or P so that they share a common point. So we could name, there's, there's several we could name here. So I'll, I'll just name a few. Um, MR shares a common point with MP, right? They both use point M. So those guys intersect. We could say SM. SM would intersect MP. They're both sharing point M. We could say SP would intersect MP. Uh, you could say OP, you could say NM, right? Those are all intersecting segments. Let me just name a couple of those. So MR shares point M, um, SP, right? There were several that we could have named on that one. Um, and then all segments that are skew to OT. So uh, I, I think the best way to see skew lines um, is I am looking for a line segment 
that is not running the same direction as OT and is not on the same plane as OT. So here's OT, right? So I need lines that are not going up and down and are not connected to this plane, right, or this plane. So, for example, so if you look at MS, for example, definitely not running the same direction as OT, and it's not on the same plane as OT. OT is on the right side of the box, and OT is on the back of the box, right? It's, it's, it's a line, a segment that is a part of this plane and is a part of this plane, right? So MS is not running in the same direction and is not on either one of those planes. So MS would be a good example of a skew line to OT. Uh, see if we can find an, a, a couple more here. So how about MN, right? MN is definitely not running the same direction as OT, so it's not, not parallel, and it's not on the same plane, right? So MN would be another good one. So how about one more? I'm sure there's several we can name. Let's just name one more of these. Um, how about RS? So RS would be another good one. It's definitely not running the same direction, and it's not on this plane, and it's not on this plane. So RS would be another skew line to that one. Uh, so there's, there's quite a few that we can name to this one. So I name on this one. So I'm just going to name those. So let us jump to page two. All right. So on page two, we are now getting into all vocab. So this, the second half of the lesson is all based on vocab. Um, so here is your important vocab for this part. Right, so this is this is the stuff that um, we need to identify. This will take over for several sections, so we really want to be familiar with the vocabulary that we're seeing in this box because uh, we're going to start using this quite a bit for the rest of this chapter, uh, even future chapters as we get into triangles uh, in the next one. Um, you're going to still see a lot of the same stuff. Uh, so these guys will come up quite a bit this chapter and next chapter. Um, so here's what we got. Interior angles, right? When you think of the word interior, we think of the word inside, right? So as I look at this figure, I have two lines running this direction. They're not parallel yet, uh, but they are running somewhat left to right. And you'll notice that there is a third line that intersects both of those lines. So there is a special name for that third line. Uh, that's called your transversal. Right, and that was this vocab word right here. So a transversal is the line that intersects the other two lines within the diagram. Right, so that's one we want to be familiar with. So for the when they said interior angles, they're talking about the angles that are on the inside of this diagram. So we see the transversal, we see those, you see how it creates eight angles. Um, and so as we look at those eight angles, the ones on the inside like three, four, five, and six, right? They're, they're in between lines M and N. And so those are interior angles. Um, exterior angles, let's just mention it since it goes in a line with what we're talking about already. Exterior angles are ones on the outside. So whenever you hear the word exterior, we got to think outside, right? Like exit. When you exit a building, you're going out. Uh, so X, that prefix X, uh, tells you to think of the word out. Um, and so one, and two and eight and seven are exterior angles. They're on the outside of the diagram. So here comes the four super special ones that we're gonna be using so much of this chapter, those four right there. So alternate interior angles. So first of all, we already talked about the word interior means inside. So I, when I see the word interior, I'm only looking at those four angles right? Three, four, five, and six. Alternate means that they are on opposite sides of the transversal. They are alternating. So three and five are interior angles that are on opposite sides of the transversal. The one thing they don't want you to pick are ones that are linear pairs, right? So when I see three and four, 
we would call those a linear pair, not alternate interior angles. So I know it sounds like it kind of fits the description, uh, but when we're picking these four check marks, they can't be a part of the same linear pair, right? They cannot be on the same line. They want to be on different lines and on opposite sides of the transversal. So I want to pick one from line M. I want to pick one from line N. They're interior and they're on opposite sides of the transversal line T, right? So three and five are alternate interior and so are four and six. All right, four and six are alternate interior. So what about um, consecutive interior? Consecutive means like in a row or in a line, right? Consecutive is one right after the other. So alternate means they were on opposite sides of the transversal. Consecutive means they are on the same side of the transversal. Um, and, and I've even seen some books and some online stuff that instead of calling these consecutive interior, uh, they make it even simpler and they call them same side interior. Right? But that's just not what our book calls them. So they use the word consecutive. So four and five are consecutive interior. Three and six are consecutive interior. So if we get to the same, same ideas but on the outside, so alternate exterior angles. So again, I want to find an exterior angle, one, two, eight, or seven. Those are exterior angles. And alternate means they're on opposite sides of the transversal. So we would look at ones like 2 and 8, and we would look at ones like 1 and 7, right? Again, I don't want to pick linear pairs. Those are linear pairs, right? We have a different vocab for that. So 1 and 2 are a linear pair. So I would not pick those as alternate exterior angles. They need to be on two different lines, right? So they need to be, one needs to be on line M, one needs to be on line N. So as we just named. All right, and then the last vocab word is corresponding angles. Corresponding means that they are in the same position, but in a different group. That's probably the best way to identify that one. So look at one, two, three, and four. It makes up one group of angles. Five, six, seven, eight makes up the other group of angles. So when I pick corresponding angles, I got to pick one connected to line M, and I got to pick one connected to line N. And what you're looking for is ones that are in the same position. So you see angle one, how it's in the top left of his group? Well, angle five is in the top left of his group. So they are corresponding angles. They're in the, they're in the same position, but in a different group of angles. They're on, a, they're on different lines, right? So we could say two is in the top right and six is in the top right. So those would be corresponding angles. Uh, we could say 3 and 7, and we could say 4 and 8 would be corresponding angles. So super, super important vocab. Uh, we're, they're going to give you a couple examples that you'll already have for you here. Um, and this is just about naming. Um, it's just right in the vocab so that we get familiar with it. So if you look at 10 and 16, uh, here is 10 and here is 16. One of the things I always encourage students to do is if there are extra lines involved, cover up what you don't need. Um, so when they say 10 and 16, neither one of those are in any way connected to line P, right? So when I look at 10 and 16, I only want to see this. And now it's much easier for me to identify what they are, right? And so that might really help you do the same thing. Uh, so as I look at 10 and 16, you can see they're both on the outside, so they are exterior angles. And since they are on opposite sides of the transversal, here's your transversal for this one, right? They would be alternating. So that we would call those alternate exterior angles. If you look at part B, so if I want to look at 4 and 12, um, and again, if I see 4 here and 12 here, neither one of those are connected to line L. So... Let's cover up the one that is not a part of this problem, and hopefully that will make this a little more clear as to what we're seeing. So if you look at 4 and 12, you'll notice that he's an exterior and he's an interior for this problem. All right, so as I look at those, um, I notice that they are both in the same position within their group. Angle 4 is the bottom left of his group. Angle 12 is the bottom left of his group, so we would call these 
corresponding angles. Um, again, guys, really helpful to try to blot out or try to cover up what you don't need in something like this. Uh, if we get to 12 and 13, so again, here's 12, here's 13, neither one associated with line P, so I'm going to cover him up. So as I look at 12 and 13, um, for this problem, they're both on the interior and they're on the same side. Right? These are same side interior angles. Um, and the word we need to use for that is consecutive. Right? So 12 and 13 are consecutive interior angles. And then one more of these, and I also want to point out something really important on this in just a second. But 3 and 9, so if I look at 3 and 9, again, neither one of those are part of line L. So for 3 and 9, their transversal is line N. Right? That's the transversal for this problem. As uh, so I look at 3 and 9, again, they're both interior. And they're on opposite sides of the transversal, so we would call those alternate interior angles. Okay, so here's something super important, because you're going to run into some of these, and it's going to trip you up. What if I said something like, what about 1 and 15? 1 and 15. Is there a relationship? Does that fit any of our description? And the common mistake would people say that they are alternate exterior angles, um, or something along those lines. But here's the issue. What's the transversal? Line, or sorry, angle 1 is a part of lines P and N. Angle 15 is a part of Q and L. They don't have a common line, right? There is no transversal that connects this group to this group. So there is no relationship between those angles and those angles. They do not fit any of our descriptions because there is no transversal when you look at those two groups. So they do have to be connected to a common line. So that's why when you see groups like this, right, all of those angles are connected to line P. Line P is the transversal. Um, and so that's important when we look at these relationships. So for these ones, um, always free to pause and give these a try on your own. So then the first three, all they want you to do is name the transversal. Um, and, and maybe one easy way to identify a transversal is it's the line that both angles are connected to. So if I look at 9 and 13 for this first one, what's the line that 9 and 13 are both connected to? It would be this guy, right? Line Q. So line Q is the transversal um, for angles 9 and 13. That's the line that they're both connected to. So we would say line Q, 5 and 14. So again, as I look at 5 and 14, what are the two angles that, uh, or sorry, what is the line that 5 and 14 are both connected to? They're both connected to line L, right? So line L would be the transversal for that one, and then 4 and 6, you can see are both connected to line P, So that would be the transversal for those. Um, so on these last group, just name what they are. So within the diagram up there, if I look at 1 and 5, so here's 1 and 5. Uh, they're both in the top left angle of their group. So those would be corresponding angles. Uh, let's go over to this guy here, so 2 and 8. So 2 and 8 are both on the outside, and they're on opposite sides of the transversal. So those are alternate exterior angles. Uh, 3 and 11. There we go. So for 3 and 11, uh, both on the bottom right of their group. So we would see those as corresponding angles. Twelve and three. So for twelve and three, uh, you can see on these they're both interior and they're on the same side of the transversal. So uh, we would call those consecutive interior angles. Oops, consecutive interior angles. 
Uh, down here, I'm trying to keep all this on the same screen for you. Uh, 6 and 16. Where are we at? There's 6, there's 16. So let's look at this. So 6 and 16. Uh, we're going to see those as alternate interior angles within that diagram. 11 and 14 over here. So for 11 and 14, uh, we're going to see those as consecutive interior angles. Right, they're on the same side and they're both interior within that drawing. Get one last one here as the bell goes off. So 10 and 16, both on the right side, so let's cover up that one. So 10 and 16 within this diagram are alternate exterior angles. So super important vocab, you'll be hearing those, those phrases for the rest of the chapter, um, and that's it for this one.